Folks, in today's video, we're gonna be testing our ponds and I want you to guess right now how much water is in that pond right there behind us. Let's have some fun. If you mess with my freedom, I'll tell you just what you can kiss. That's right. Hey guys, welcome back to the Stony Ridge Farm. This video is brought to you in part by our friends at Natural Waterscapes. There'll be a link down the video description to these guys. We're going to be gathering water samples today to test our pond water. Each pond on the farm is a different ecosystem and we have three ponds on the property. We've got the big pond, we've got a little pond right over here, right across from our house, and you'll get some drone footage of these ponds right now. And we've got a smaller catfish pond, which is up at the top of the hill, the highest point on the farm. These ponds are used for irrigation, these ponds are used for recreation, and they're used to help water livestock. So really cool, but we wanna make sure that our ponds are healthy and we're harboring a healthy ecosystem. So we're gonna gather up our samples, I'll show you how we do that, and we're gonna send these samples off to Natural Waterscapes and they're gonna give us our results and we'll read all that off to you and we'll talk to them and find out what they mean because that's the most important thing, that we have a good ecosystem. When you contact Natural Waterscapes, you're gonna get a kit just like this. This little kit has water testing kit instructions on it, and we have information sheets on each one of these ponds. So it's really, really cool. This is for the big pond, and I'll fill all that out in just a second. Um, the questions that it asks basically, Pond address, average depth, source of water feeding the pond. You have aeration, surface or bottom aeration, and all that stuff. It's a little breezy out today. Species of types of fish that you have in the pond, and all that jazz. And then they'll give you all the information you need. The date and time of the sample actually matters. And you can also send in pictures. So if you really, really want to get down and dirty, you can learn a whole lot about ponds from testing the water. So what we're going to do is go ahead and gather our first sample. And the instruction sheet tells us, if we can hold it still, exactly what we need to do. Before taking pond water sample, remove ice pack and place in freezer. And I've got those in the freezer already. Collect water sample. We want to keep it cool. It's winter time right now. I don't think we'll have to worry about that. For weed samples, include multiple strands in the bag. So there's a little bag included with it. It's winter time, so we're probably not going to collect any aquatic plants because nothing is growing right now. But in the summertime, there's aquatic grass in here and we could easily get in with a fishing lure and pull some out. Ask me how I know. So let's gather our sample up. We'll get it all boxed up and sent over. So it comes with a box and a sealable insulated bag, okay? So we'll be using all that. And it comes with rubber gloves so you don't contaminate. I don't think we have to worry about contamination so much, but we'll put the rubber gloves on anyway. And then you ship it back. I think it comes with a return label too. Yeah, right there. Bam, return label and FedEx returns Monday through Friday. Won't be using our rubber gloves because they're made for somebody that's a member of the lollipop guild not man hands <laughs> look at this uh, that ain't gonna work <laughs> now just so you guys know if you're having issues with your pond like duckweed or something like that you can list those issues in the paperwork and they'll talk to you about it once you get your results so let's get our sample here i want to go down probably two inches or so into the water We did have rain about two days ago. That's my sample, you can see. It's kind of cloudy. Yeah, it's all good. Pop the lid on, nice and tight. And we're gonna head up to the other three ponds and we'll see you guys once we get our results and we'll also read over the paperwork because there's only one pond that really has an issue and it's this one and it likes to grow duckweed. On to the next pond, which isn't very far. This pond has aeration. front of the house, front of the house. This pond is approximately three quarters of an acre and the aeration unit is laying on its side because we had a flood and it's full of tadpoles, tadpoles everywhere. So let's flip the aeration unit back up. I need to get this up on some cinder blocks it's trying to work right now but it doesn't work very good when it's buried in the water it's not designed to be underwater that tube goes out and aerates the pond so we'll get our sample about right here i see tadpoles man it's the middle of the winter and there's tadpoles out here oh baby nice 
front of the house. There we go. Contact. Beautiful sunset tonight on the farm. Ready for spring, guys. So the next pond is about a half a mile away. It's at the highest point on the farm. I dug this pond myself, and it's again an agricultural pond for irrigation, and it's a catfish pond. We have a great habitat for catfish in there, and I built some places where catfish can spawn, and they're actually making babies, which is pretty awesome. So I put 25 catfish in there, and there's probably 150 in there now, but we have an otter problem. So we've got an otter that keeps coming up and eating the big catfish, which are supposed to be for me to eat. Here's our cows. We've got 50 black Angus cows, actually 48 black Angus and one South Pole. Come on, buddy, you're too tight. That doesn't mean you're getting let out. Don't even think about it, kids. This is called a stay gate. It's made to uh, hold your gate in place when you go through it. Really cool. Just drops a little foot. Catfish pond, bam, that there's a catfish pond. It's approximately a half an acre. It's not very big, uh, but this was a spot on the farm that really needed some attention. There was a gully right here, and this pond is yeah, 14, 15 feet deep in the middle. There was a gully over here, and you see there's cow manure around. This is the only pond that cows have had access to, so I'm interested to see if that will make any difference in the bacteria levels if we get a report on that. Uh, again, probably about a half an acre. We'll get this sample and uh, we'll see you guys when the samples come back. The results are in guys. Oh my goodness. I cannot believe Natural Waterscapes has sent so much information here. It's feeding me with a fire hose. I had no idea about a lot of this information. Now it's gonna get a little bit nerdy right here. I'm gonna kind of read off some stuff and I'm not real big on reading through stuff on camera. So we'll try and get you some pond footage while we're reading this stuff. So we got three reports, three reports, one, two, three. There's two in here and one in here. This is almost a 15 page report here. Let me see, how many pages is this? Nine, nine pages. So there's a lot of information. I'm getting ready to feed you with a fire hose. These are just the results of the other ponds. And we're standing out here in front of what I call the big pond. And that's the results of the big pond right there. This is the way they work. Natural Waterscapes actually pulls up your address and gets a map and maps out the size of your pond. And they kind of have, I guess, a lot of information from the map, the soil types and all that stuff. They can pull up all that online, which is super awesome. Uh, some of the stuff that we need to know here is the pH. So I'm gonna read off some of this stuff. pH is a measure of the acidity or, or basicity of the water. Water is considered a neutral pH of seven in ideal pH range in your pond is six to 8.5, okay? That being said, our big pond, which we're sitting right here beside, has a pH of 6.9, which is within range, okay? Now, nitrates, okay, we'll skip in the head here. Hardness, total hardness, and I think that's calcium carbonate. Total hardness measures dissolved calcium and magnesium minerals in the pond water. This is crucial for fish health, and fish can absorb these minerals from the water directly or through food. A total hardness level of higher than 75 is preferred for maintaining pH stability and promoting fish health. What do we have in our results? We have total hardness of 24.1 milligrams per liter and what we're looking for is 50 milligrams per liter. So we're in the low department. We're gonna tell you all the cures for this stuff here in just a second. Nitrate levels. Nitrate's a form of nitrogen found in the water while nitrates are an essential for plant growth. High levels can cause water quality issues. Levels primarily impact algae growth with higher values than 0.5 milligrams per liter. Nitrates are elevated at 0.728, which is two tenths higher 
Uh, it's nearly almost half as like one and a half times what it should be. So that's pretty high. Uh, phosphate, you're going to hear some noises here. There's airplanes flying over. This is real world, real life. Ammonia. Ammonia is a dissolved gas that results from fish waste de decomposition of organic matter. High ammonia concentrations can be toxic to fish and other aquatic life. Any measurable ununionized ammonia is considered undesirable. Big pond behind us, ammonia. Not detected is what's desirable. We have 0 0.077 milligrams per liter, so seven one hundredths, almost eight one hundredths of uh, milligrams per liter. So we have high ammonia. We're going to tell you all the cures for this, so please stick around. You may have to watch this a couple times, and again, the information is all out there. I'll try and post links to, uh, to their website. Phosphate. Phosphate's a nutrient found in water runoff from farms, fertilizer, organic muck, and some sources uh, are some sources of elevated phosphate. Phosphate is the limiting factor for algae and cyanobacteria growth. Levels should be maintained below 0 0.03 milligrams per liter. I told you it's getting dorky. So phosphate is elevated in our in our pond here. It's near, it's over double what it's supposed to be. So it's 0 0.07 milligrams per liter. We're in farm country. I don't use chemical fertilizers. I don't know why phosphate would be high other than potentially uh, maybe muck that's breaking down inside the pond right here. So uh, turbidity. Turbidity is a measure of water clarity, which may be due to suspended solids, tannins, algae, or organic materials. Now we took this sample in the wintertime, so it probably isn't really algae, I wouldn't think. Turbid water may be considered runoff from disturbed areas, and we did have a lot of runoff and rain recently. So cloudy and muddy water in ponds can be aesthetically unpleasing and may reduce overall productivity of the health of the pond. What's our turbidity within range? So it's clear enough. It looks pretty muddy to me, <laughs> but it's clear enough. So all of this information, like I said, I'm feeding you with a fire hose here. If you're curious about your own pond, Here's what we're really after. We are really after the fixes for all these problems so that we have the best healthy pond and ecosystem that we can possibly have. This pond has all sorts of beautiful pond fish. The other catfish pond has all sorts of awesome channel cat. But if we don't have an optimal environment for those animals and plants to grow, then we're basically fighting mother nature. We're fighting uh, or fertilizer. We don't really know what we're fighting until we t do a test like this. So the problems. Below is a list of issues. Uh, nutrients. Nutrients found in every pond. Um, this goes on to talk about nutrients and phosphate and ammonia. And uh, ammonia is uh, released from fish waste. So talk about problems. You can read through that information. Again, if you get this pond test done on your property, they're going to give you tons of recommendation. Uh, things that uh, that would uh, cause your pH to be off. Let me see. Low hardness and pH swings both impact fish populations. And I was really concerned about the pH of my water, but it turns out it's very good in this pond. The other ponds aren't. And I'm gonna read the results of the other ponds just so you know. Uh, this result is the result of the smaller pond over here in front of my house. And for a long-term treatment plan, uh, I have some issues with lilies in here, and these lilies are, uh, they're, they're called water shield. Water shield is a tiny lily, it looks like this guy right here, okay? They're very invasive, and they take over a pond, and the leaves are just shaped like that. They're not shaped like a heart. They're not like a big old frog lily where you see flowers and stuff. They're an invasive lily, and they shade out the pond, and they really damage the ecosystem, so I was concerned about that. That pond's starting to get some in it. So here were some of the solutions. Uh, Long-term treatment plan, removing muck, cleansing, phosphate eliminator, and uh, these guys offer every single product that they're, that they're talking about right here. Aeration, aeration, aeration. Uh, so natural waterscapes, again, naturalwaterscapes.com, you can find all this information. They recommended an aeration system for this pond, which we will be putting in from Koner's uh, Water Solutions. It's going to be awesome. We already have a solar aeration system in the pond in front of the house, and we have no system in the catfish pond. The catfish pond is the least healthy of all. So what can we do? Muck remover. So long-term treatment plan, that's their long-term treatment plan. Muck remover, three scoops, 
every two weeks, pond cleanse, three packets every two weeks, phosphate eliminator, three scoops. So all this stuff can be provided, natural water scapes. So, like I said, I'm not real big on busting out papers like this and reading them off to you. I just think that now you guys know natural waterscapes test water and can give you recommendations. So let's talk about the other ponds, okay? So the first pond we've already talked about, that's the big pond right here. We'll get rid of that guy. The next pond we're gonna talk about is the catfish. Well, that's the worst pond, let's save it for last. The next pond we're gonna talk about is the pond that's right across from me and it's right in front of my house. I built this pond for about 2,500 bucks. It was just kind of on a whim. It was a mushy, nasty area and uh, it was a swampy area kind of. So we got down in, we got down to good dirt and we built the dam, dammed it up and now we have awesome habitat. The total hardness of it, uh, very, very low, nearly half of what it should be. The pH of it, 6.64, so it's within range. Nitrate levels were elevated. Nitrate could be coming from too high of a fish population. There is some rotting debris in that pond. It has all sorts of logs and stuff rotting in it where I flooded back some of the trees. Uh, ammonia is high, 0.98, and again, that could be from overpopulation of fish, and it can be from muck, uh, they were saying. Phosphate is elevated, everything is elevated. Turbidity was in normal range, so it's clear enough, and no cyanobacteria. That's important, the cyanobacteria is very, very important, guys, especially if you're wanting wildlife to drink out of your ponds, and you want your fish to be healthy, and you wanna catch the fish and consume them. So we catch fish, catch bass and bluegill and crappie out of this pond, and we catch the catfish out of the other pond. If it had cyanobacteria in it, we sure wouldn't wanna eat that. Okay, you may want to go to your local fish pond that you fish at and run a test on it just for fun, just to see. Maybe that's why you're getting sick. I don't know. <laughs> so the last one is going to be the catfish pond, which is up on the top of the hill. We'll get you a little footage of it. I built that pond myself. Again, on a whim, I had an excavator up here and it was a basically a runoff pond. I had a little bit of spring fed pond. It was kind of um, uh, the water would flow in certain times of the year. So that pond, and also we get information of the depth and how much water. So that pond has four, stay tuned to the end, I'll tell you how much water is in this pond. But that pond has 404,175 gallons, 1.2 acre feet, and it's about 0.12 acres. So again, my water quality, my pH was 6.44, which is low, but within range. So I, I anticipate the pH being low and everything. Total hardness is about the same as the pond right here. So maybe it's a new pond thing. This was 1961. This was 2021. And the other one was 2022. So it could be just the age of the pond. Ammonia levels not detected is, is normal. I've got ammonia in the upper pond. There's no fertilizer anywhere around that pond. There is, however, the cows have access to that pond so that could be a reason for heightened ammonia levels. Turbidity, it was elevated. Uh, the cows had just been grazing over there in that area and that's the only waterway that the cows have access to. So maybe I need to limit that access just a little bit. No cyanobacteria, so our animals are healthy. How much water is in that pond? Let's talk about it. Surface area is 1.31 acres, 57,048 square feet. The perimeter is 1,022 feet, so I guess if I walked it five times, I'd walk a mile. <laughs> the max depth is eight feet, average depth, depth is about five feet. Estimated water volume, here it is, 2,139,300 gallons of water right here in this pond. That is absolutely amazing. Millions and millions of gallons of water. I have seen this pond running over the dam all the way across the dam. That's a lot of water, guys. Well, I hope today's video helped you guys out. If you need any more information, I'll post a link down there in the video description for you. We'll probably do some pond treatments. Again, we have an aeration system we're gonna be putting in here, so stay tuned. Be sure you subscribe to the channel. And I'd love to have you back here on the First Generation Farm here on the Stony Ridge. Take care, guys. Woo! Well, come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and 